Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today I am going to be reacting to if the Emperor had a text to speech device, episode 16, Universal History with Professor Emperor by Bruva Alphabusa. If you want to check out my previous reactions, remember the playlist card would be at the top. Just click on it and be able to access it. If you want to check out the original video as well as Bruva Alphabusa's YouTube channel, remember the links are in the description below. Yeah, last week was a short episode, short three, where Kitten, you know, we found out that he was in love with a Tao warrior. Um, it, it didn't work out well for them. They had to break up and he didn't take it quite well. Um, this is all, you know, in relation to him hating the Tao in general <laughs> and, you know, telling the Emperor that they cannot melee fight, that they mainly focus on long range weapons. So the Emperor is quite displeased with that fact that, you know, the Tao are not melee warriors um, and he still wants to, you know, either control them or exterminate them. Um, so yeah, now we're continuing on with episode 16 and yeah, let's see if Kitten has anything new to tell us. Um, yeah, let's start. Three, two, one, go. Wait, some of those buildings there are very familiar <laughs> to me. They look very familiar. Uh, one of them looked like the Sphinx in Egypt, uh, you know. Yeah, and this glass pyramid. Um, which museum? It's a museum in France that has, you know, this glass pyramid kind of structure. I just can't remember the name. But yeah, some of the things here are very recognizable <laughs> interested not really i'm just making sure you're not trying to invite your army of demonic tentacle monsters over for a party or something no, i'm quite we're gonna, gonna hide look at me start talking to them i'll sneak while you wait to see can we please have a little bit of trust at this point this this pole looks also familiar in a way i don't know it i think it's like a musical instrument but i don't remember the name of it. Um, it comes from Australia, if I'm not mistaken, or New Zealand. Yeah, I, I just can't remember the name, but I've seen some indigenous people use this, something similar to it, actually, I should say, uh, and, you know, making some musical sounds from it. So, yeah, I, I think I just don't know the name. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, of all the places in this expansive galaxy, this isn't the most comfortable location for me to be in. Besides, I'm not Fulgrim. So you're telling me that succulent food, a luxurious atmosphere, and an actual bed are less comfortable than the realm that is literally a collective seizure? Eh. If you had more mental capacity than a box of Grox manure, maybe you too would appreciate its own unique majesty. This assumes that I'm insane enough to want to. Nevertheless, you just being here is a sign of trust in my lord, is it not? Eh, perhaps. Why are you still here? Well, okay, tell me. What are you actually doing? Don't mistake my question for curiosity, I'm mostly just concerned. Research, observation, experimentation, calming my nerves, listening to the whispers of the warp, passing the time of day, and so on. Albeit it's pretty damn hard to get a good focus in this place, with father around, finding any warp traffic to spy on, which isn't tinted gold and full of pent-up frustration, is like trying to remove a demonic incursion from your rectum. No, I left my heresy detector in my chambers, but I hear it going on from here. OW! OW! Stop that! Stop what? Stop dazzling me with your ignorance! Your shiny, half-baked head is burning through my retina like an acid made of stupid- Ah! Seriously, though, have you still not got that this heresy expression you speak of is just your Imperium's excuse to put a giant bolt into the head of anyone who goes against you? The Imperium is like a child and a my dad is better than your dad argument that received the right to kill anyone that attempts to argue back, you witless dildodies. Well, if it make everything so... I don't know, 
diabolical, creepy, and straight up evil, maybe you wouldn't be such easy targets for both propaganda and a bolt shell to the forehead. I mean, you're not doing yourselves any favors by wearing the skin of your enemies, for example. For your information, I have never. Magnus wears the skin of his enemies? Oh gosh, so you flay humans and then you. Oh gosh. Worn the skin of my enemies. Do I look like a Necron flayer to you? To be fair, the Necrons and your thousand sons do that. Oh yeah, the Necrons do that as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. Ugh, oh, gosh. Ugh. Oh. Pretty similar motives nowadays. Yes, we've already sent the cease and desist order. They're just being ferocious plasteel dicks about it. Okay, we get it. Sure. Regardless, you still look like you woke up on the wrong side of the Iron Terror. <sighs> I do see where you're coming from. All the decapitated heads and giant spikes do make it look like we're compensating for one thing or another. Like an act of decent parents. But to be fair, given your Imperium's alarming obsession with skulls, I'd say you have some issues of your own. Nevertheless, did you only come here to watch over my shoulder, or did you have some other reason? Well, I actually wanted to ask you something. Well, go ahead. I'd break the monotony. I've been wondering. I've served my Emperor for somewhere around 11,000 years or so. I don't really keep track of him. And even though he's my, uh, our father, I don't actually know all that much about him besides what I've seen with my own eyes. Isn't that enough? Of course it is. After fighting this side and hearing his- Wait, the custodians don't talk to the Emperor? Kitten, you don't talk to the Emperor? You don't wanna... I mean, you don't know anything about him, really? Really? Okay. Dreams for humanity. No sane man could not appreciate his majesty, wisdom, and might. Indirectly calling me insane now. Truly, he is the one and only worthy leader of mankind. But where did he come from? Did he have parents, or did he just... I don't know, crawl out with gold? Wait, you don't know? How can you not know? Uh, okay. Deposit? Not that's a bad thing, of course. I'm sure it was the most glorious deposit in the world, man. <laughs> oh, hungering for some crisp, luscious knowledge, are we? How fascinating. I thought you companions were especially trained to act as completely uninteresting impersonal automatons. Well, truth be told, I think as time has gone by, most of us have either gone a bit into the cuckoo's nest or have managed to retain some, uh, form of rationality. Actually, under one exception, everyone has completely lost their mind. Hey, Kitten! Want to go and take a swim in the Promethean pools with us? No. Fine, be that way! As I was saying, I still follow the Emperor right to the Eye of Terror if he commands it. I live for him, I follow his every word, and I never defy him. And I would happily give my life for him. But, well, there's a the thing. I'd happily give my life for him. Implying that you can actually be happy. Which also implies the fact that you have thoughts and feelings of your own, which subsequently implies you aren't an incredibly stale person whose personal interest can be summed in the words standing around. I guess that's part of the reason why I was elected to the position of Captain General. After millennia of isolation and your occasional murdering of demons trying to creep in, I'm the one and only companion who's not batshit insane. And I suppose that's also part of the reason why you're still wearing your armor after all this time. Yeah! Or, uh, well, not all this time. Oh? I went through a... phase. Can't say I'm particularly proud of it. What phase? Do tell us more. More, tell us more. Come on. Those loincloths really don't leave much of the imagination, you know. Why they wrote. I swear I could taste the loss. Anyway, as you were asking. Ah, oh, yes. The subject. Okay, I know he's been around pretty much as long as humanity has, and that he has gracefully guided us through all of that, but... Did he make humanity in his image, or is he simply the guardian of our species? And if he made us, what made him? And if he didn't make us, what made us? Ah, the oldest question in human history. What are our origins? Sadly, I'm of little help to you in that field. Been too busy comprehending the Immaterium and superhero comics. Really? Didn't the Emperor tell you himself? And if he didn't, don't you have some old archaic book about it or something? Like, he should be knowing. I thought Magnus the Red, after, you know, making that deal with 
Zinch, you would have access or knowledge to almost everything and uh, everything, that, all knowledge in the universe, you know, as much as possible. I thought he would have known, but okay. Actually, he never told me much about his own past or humanity's origins. Perhaps he didn't want us to know since he's always been so exasperatingly introvert about things like teaching. That, or it's because I never really asked. May have been the latter, all things considered. And no, I don't have an old book lying about that specifically tells us where we all came from. Only my neurotic brother Lorgar would have the talent to write a fictive suicide of that caliber. Besides, even if I had a book like that, all the exciting demon tomes with screaming faces and beware signs lying about would probably just make it look severely unappealing in comparison. Gah, I suspected this much. And I've looked through all the tomes and slates in the palace's libraries, all the data storage and archives, ancient texts and journals. I've even looked through albums of travel photos for Terra's sake. But I couldn't find anything about the time before the Emperor conquered Terra during the Age of Strife. If you are that curious, why not just ask Father himself? Yeah, I don't know. Multiple reasons. His mind is so splinted that remembering such ancient knowledge might make him fling his skull across the room like a bowling ball. That and Hello? Imperial Fist, can we help you? <laughs> Much unsure if he actually want to tell me. I mean, if he never told you, why would he tell me? Well, he does seem to like you, despite him being grumpiness incarnate. He relies on you to listen to his boundless complaints and to inform him about, to quote, stupid shit. I'd even say he trusts you. He certainly trusts you more than he trusts me or any of his other sons for that matter. Actually, are you sure you're not his wife or something? No, of course not, but... wait. No. No. Really? You think so? Indeed, stepmother. First of all, quiet you. Second of all, I think you might be right. I'm really wrong. So I might just go and ask him then. You do that. Actually, don't you want to come too? Nah, I'm gonna practice for that talent show that I heard is coming up next Thursday. You say they're batshit insane, but your fellow companions do seem to know how to have a good time. Uh, unless you want soggy hair and stay down for a week, I would highly recommend you drop that. Why should I? Oh. Ellipsis. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. So let me get this straight. You mean to say that you really have no records of human history before the Age of Strife accessible within the Imperial Palace? No, not really. Most of it is so heavily censored by the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition that more closely resembles a barcode than it does anything else. So uh, but, but, guys, come on. You know, such information should be in the Imperial Palace and not touched by the Ecclesiarchy or the Inquisition. I mean, you guys protect the Empress' estate, you know, that's his palace, it's his home. You guys are the bodyguards. You guys are the ones who are supposed to be protecting his valuable possessions, his information and everything else. How no, how is it possible that the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition were able to uh, you know, confiscate such valuable information and keep it out even from you guys? The custodians. Oh, you have no recollection of the tales of the old ones, my own conception, the rebellion of the men of iron, or any other tidbits of humanity actually kicking ass? Incredible. I honestly thought I'd hit the greasy fucking bottom of this shithole when you told me of the Inquisition's activities, but I'm just now realizing that I'm only scratching the surface of this frozen ocean of ineptitude. It's almost as if nobody wants to hear about how our people weren't the be-all and all of civilization in this cesspit of a galaxy. <laughs> um, yeah, funny that, isn't it? Right, this is something that I shall now unfuck post haste. Magnus, fetch some parchment and do what you do best. Take notes. Do not worry, I always have paper with me. What a fucking nerd you are. Anyway, I want you to write down everything I am about to tell you. And when I'm done, rewrite the whole damn thing as a grand historical document. Then I want you to start covering it in holy seals and shit, and then throw it into a pile of dirt for a while, so it gets that shitty old paper look. That'll make stupid people think it's inherently trustworthy. Oh. And then keep it in a stasis field and put it in the most secure place in the palace where nobody's able to reach it. Yeah. And shiny britches? 
Yes, my lord? When Magnus finishes his chicken scratchings, I then want you to take this document to the scribes, have it proof or to make sure he doesn't sneak in any mimetic chaos bullshit, then have it mass produced and distributed all across the galaxy to all people of authority. I don't care if you literally need to ram it down their fucking throats, just make sure they read that shit and understand it. No so it's going to be like the Imperial Truth 2.0 then, you know? Huh. Spam box filter shall stop my glorious wisdom this time. Yes, my lord. Now, gather around children, for it is grand story time. Q visuals. In the beginning, there was nothing. The nothing is nothing that has ever not existed. The nothing just kinda sat about and unexisted, not bothered by any such thing as existence or reality. There may have been some bits of heat energy floating about, but that shit doesn't count. Eventually, however, this frigid, lonely expanse of plot hole level nothing got sick of being nothing and decided to get a job. So all the energy bits sucked themselves into a ball smaller than the level of progress made since I was put on this overglorified Porto Potty lighthouse. Then, the energy exploded with the force of something that you'd compare giant fucking explosions to. There has never been, and never will be, an explosion as big as this one. It was so big that it's literally still happening right now. Wait, what caused the heat to compress and explode like that? I don't fucking know. Dark matter, plane walkers, traversers, a bunch of geeks with nothing better to do making a badass fictional universe for the purpose of inevitably selling inordinately expensive plastic miniatures? It could have been anything. So after the mega explosion, atoms started to take form from the massive amounts of energy that floated around, and these atoms started recombining, collapsing, and forming themselves into elements, molecules, and compounds. These substances, unlike energy, had mass and decided to get closer to each other because now this new thing called gravity applied to them because that's just what fucking happened. Fuck this boring comic shit, let's get to the good stuff. As matter formed into big lumps, these lumps became celestial formations. Stars, planets, nebulas, asteroids, comets. Eventually, due to conservation of energy, and some weird chemical reactions, life eventually formed on these lumps of space crap. Supposedly, the first life that came about was a race of beings that became known as the Old Ones. The reason for this nickname is that they were the Old And they were existing in our own galaxy, not in like the rest of, the rest of the universe, just in our galaxy. Uh, they were the first living uh, intelligent species, I think. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. The rulers of reality and evolution. And they were really fucking old, go figure. These beings are the shitty neglectful grandparents of all that is life. They evolved so damn hard that they eventually became spiritual entities, discovering the so-called realm of souls. As a side note, as you can see, they looked something like big, fat amphibians, before they evolved into beings of pure power, so that's a lot of progress for a bunch of giant hyper-intelligent toadmen. Come to think of it, that sounds a lot like the Administratum. Incomprehensibly powerful for almost no reason. Toadman, you rose tin a typewriter with a fucking mouth. Anyway, they then decided to create other species for shits and giggles. Some said that they created all life after themselves, but I'm not so sure on that one. After themselves? No, I don't think so. Perhaps they helped push the boat out, but they certainly didn't fucking build it. So these old ones didn't create humanity. That's what I just said, you hollow-headed ninny. Most life evolved in one way or another, and anyone who doesn't accept that is probably really, really, really drunk. Lorgar's going to have fun with this. <laughs> Continuing on. I think Lorgar is just too corrupted to even care, really. You just say that Emperor's telling lies. Next to arrive were a bunch of floozy fucking milksops that you would recognize as the Eldar. Due to the fact that, early in their evolution... They look like anime characters, you know, but with pointy ears. They reproduced like space rabbits. They actually ended up becoming the dominant race in the galaxy. 
the Odons were more like spread out singularities of imbalanced min-max hanging around here and there. But neither race really cared for each other, so they coexisted peacefully, one spreading like a pointy-eared plague, while the other pooped out orangutans, more frogmen, and races with unpronounceable names. But then, came the Necrontier. Wait. That sounds familiar. Strap yourselves to something, because here comes the most obvious plot twist of the fucking century. The Necrontier were salty assholes, because they had evolved on a shitty, radiation-blasted planet. They built underground cities that seriously look- Is that a female version of a Necrontier? Wow, okay. Like depressing tombs, because their life sucks so much that they would rather wait out their own death, than do much else. After years of being subservient to their animosity, like an entire race of entitled middle-aged people, they became envious of both the Old Own's incredible powers, and the Eldar's massive galaxy-spanning growth. Of course they were little more than an irritating bunch of self-pitying tearjerkers to such powerful races. Eventually, however, the spite of the Necrontier became so mighty that they started hating all life in the galaxy, even themselves, and decided to start murdering literally everything. However, they soon realized that manually making sure every single grass straw on a planet was dead was really fucking tedious, so they started snooping around for something to make into a super weapon. That led to them finding a weird bunch of gas orbiting the super radioactive star that had turned their planet into the empire of atomic bombia. They suddenly noticed that the gas was feeding on the very energy of the star. It turned out that the gas was alive, but not in the same sense as other life forms. It had. He's talking about uh, the creature that you know was contained in those me metal skeletal structures by the Necrontier, uh, the Sitan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Evolved in a whole different way and was technically even older than the old ones. Of course, all it actually did was eat radiation and, you know, be what is basically celestial fart gas. But of course, these assy Necrontards just had to fuck with this peaceful, sun-eating anomaly. They proceeded to collect as many of these weird sentient gas clouds as they could find and forge bodies of living metal for them, because what isn't that the first idea that comes to your mind as well? They used the gas's own radiation-eating abilities to lure the dormant consciousnesses of them into the bodies they had made via the use of a bridge of starlight, or some pretentious shit like that. So after eons of peacefully orbiting stars and eating radiation, these beings which knew no other need than to drift around and consume were suddenly given incredibly powerful physical forms and hyper-computerized synthetic brains to give them all the knowledge the Necrotry Hearts had collectively acquired. As you can guess, this went swimmingly for everyone involved. Wait, I think I can guess who these guys are now. Congratulations. These gas entities, they became the Catan, and the Necrons here became the Necrons? Give this man a PhD because that's some serious brain power for a giant armored potato chip. But yes, these beings, in their fancy new bodies, with their big new brains, were named the Katan, by the Necrontier, and were worshipped as gods. The Katan weren't- Is it Katan or is it C-10? Katan or C-10? Nice though, they absorbed all the living metal the Necrontier had amassed, and used it to transform this massive species of psychopaths into a race of living, murderous machines, who mindlessly serve them. They also ate most of the Necrontier's souls while they were at it, because they were ungrateful assholes like that. That's also when these mounds of fluid dickery discovered that souls were far more appealing than space radiation. I guess souls have more nutrition or something. So the Catan started looking back through the extensive memories of the Necrontier, now renamed Necrons for some reason, and saw that the old ones had the biggest, tastiest souls of them all. Like the lion who tasted man, nothing is ever so sweeter. And decided that it would be a good idea to eat them. When the cat ten came gnawing at the old one's front door, the old ones of course decided to punch the shit out of them with their minds, like all grandparents do. But that's when they noticed that their psychic powers were useless against both them and the Necrons, because they had no souls of their own. This started a massive galaxy-wide massacre of the old ones that went so far that they nearly became extinct. I guess you could say that the old ones got their life towed away from them. Ha 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 ha. Seriously though, that's awful. Well, a uh, good one, Emperor. <laughs>
I guess the Necrons here got what they wanted in the end. Not quite. See, some of the old ones survived, and they decided that the only way to stop this imminent galactic doom is to fuck up in an equally as awful manner as the Necron tier. Thus, they created a new race, one which could fight the soulless Necrons for them. A race with strange reality-bending powers fueled by crowd mentality instead of souls. The Green Skin. A race that knew and desired only war and destruction. A race that could weaponize anything and was almost impossible to kill. A race that became known then as the Krorks, or as we know them today, the Orcs, because shortening names is a thing. What? Reasons? There's a plot twist you didn't see coming. The Orcs were actually important all along. So yeah, while the Krorks were fighting the Necrons, the Eldar were shitting their collective frilly patties because they knew that they were next on the menu. So they decided to salvage as much of the old one's tech as they could and fuse it with their own. Believe it or not, the webway was actually a creation of the old ones, but the El It looks like a Stargate. <laughs> Eldar nicked off with the designs, like the thieving bastards they are. That said, by combining webway technology and the power of the Realm of Souls, they created a new type of material to combat the living metal of the Necrons called Wraithbone. The Wraith constructs were sent into battle alongside the Krorks to fight back the Necrons. Turns out that while the Cat 10 were immune to psychic powers, it seemed as they couldn't handle being Wraithboned. From the moment I heard the name come up, I knew you'd say that. Why aren't you the smartest kid on the fucking block? Of course I am. No wonder you were bullied by your brothers. No, no, that's just uncalled for. Anyway, just when things started to go down the drain for the Cat 10, things got even worse for them, as one particular asshole among them known as the Deceiver, good friends with the Eldar Laughing God, brought together the most edgy Cat 10 he could possibly find, creatures with names that only the most lonely of people could come up with, such as the Nightbringer, the Void Dragon, and the Outsider. The Dessa ever then said to his fellow celestial gas canisters, They, all the other Cat 10 are weak and being killed off. We should eat them before they die so their powers won't be wasted. Thus, the Cat Ten started in fighting, and began to eat each other, while also being destroyed by the Krorks and the Eldar, because that is clearly what an intelligent life form would do. So much destruction was caused in this, the first Great War, that the Cat Ten suddenly realized they were expending more energy than they were absorbing, and would run out of power if they kept this up. All according to plan, Shago Rath said as he laughed away the night with the Death Lever. Killing all of your allies in the middle of a giant war was apparently a bad idea. Who would? Um, this story is a bit different uh, from how I've heard it from other YouTubers. You know, in terms of the Satan uh, having their own civil war, I never knew about that. Um, I knew that the Necrontier were the ones who found a way to defeat the Satan and you know shattered their bodies or kept them in some sort of like power battery systems to power up their technology and stuff like that um but yeah i knew that the necron tier were the ones who rose up against their you know masters um under the leadership of one necron tier in particular I forgot the name right now yeah but this story is a bit different or maybe i've just never heard of it you know uh, the adder uh the added information on that war, the great war between the old ones, Necrontia and uh, the Satan. Okay. The fucking thought. Plus, they simply decided to retreat back to the tomb worlds with their Necron armies to wait for the universe to become plump, juicy, and unprepared again. It would seem that at some point during that time, the Necrons must have regained some consciousness and taken revenge against the Catan for screwing them over. So I have been led to believe. Although, to be honest, it kind of sounds like the deserves what happened to them. That's what you get for being a filthy Xeno, after all. <laughs> so with that giant cluster fuck out of the way, you'd think things would get better. But nope. This giant war had left the universe a complete fucking mess. The old ones were near extinct. The Eldar were still scared shitless and worst of all, the Krorks, with no Necrons left to fight, turned on their creators since the old ones had forgotten to install a fucking off switch. Fortunately, they could be held at bay due to having no technology of their own. That said, something worse than Necrons was on the horizon. 
You see, all the souls who were eaten, and all those who died in the battles created a major imbalance in the realm of souls. This imbalance within the outer realm corrupted and twisted it with all the ill will, fears, and general lack of common fucking decency that life now collectively experienced. Nightmarish spiritual entities started to emerge from the darkness of the realm, like a giant galactic panic attack. It was at this point that the first demons emerged, and the realm of souls was given a new name. The warp? That all makes sense. Yup. Not only did that war fuck up the universe, but it fucked up the outer realms of the universe too. Compared to that war, this 10,000 year old conflict that started when fucking Horos decided to be a bad boy is barely a blip on the radar. Puts things into context, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it might be a like a small little blimp. Uh, you know, it might be insignificant to the grander scheme of things, but it was still important in terms of human uh, conquest and growth and the Imperium of Man. It was very important. Uh, if they had won, you know, the Chaos Gods would have an unlimited supply of uh, energy flowing from the suffering of humanity. Well, they kind of still do. <laughs> but still, I think it would have been even 10 times more than what they are usually getting. So, yeah, it might be a blimp, but for humanity, this was very important. It shifted everything. The entire Imperium of Man changed its appearance, its stance, and everything else about it after that war. Hmm. I suddenly feel small, and I don't know how to feel about that. You'll get used to it. Besides, you're shorter than most of your brothers anyhow. That's entirely my choice and you know it. But where were we, the humanity, during all of this? We were all busy evolving from primates into tribal cavemen, picking our noses, and fornicating in the ways that primitive beings do. But not for long. You see, warp storms caused by this huge war fucked the galaxy over. And additionally, demonic predators of the warp finished off most, if not Stop all, of the remaining old the ones. Day. It's like some complete ass wipe suddenly invaded an old folks home, demolished all their belongings, and subjected all old people to summary executions. And then another completely unrelated group came along and did the exact same thing all over again. The Eldar, realizing their own incredible fragility, decided fuck it. Literally. And so they did. Constantly. So much so that they repopulated the galaxy again, became the dominant species once more, and ruined their own reproductive cycle to the point of near non-functionality. I mean, I know you lose it if you don't use it, but if you use it fucking constantly, it's gonna get worn out and shrivel up. It's at this point that the idiot says what species emerged. The what? I am absolutely hilarious, even after all these millennia. Oh, d I still don't get it. So, actual humans finally started coming forth out of the evolutionary fuckfest at this point, and a handful of them gained psychic powers similar to that of other species carrying souls around. These early day psychers called themselves shamans, and they were totally super badass, guiding humanity by learning about the ways of nature and the universe's history through the power of the realm of souls and probably some shrooms. However, when the doddering demon douches accompanied with an entire gang of horribly unnecessary creatures like enslavers and psychnoia and started to show up, the shamans started to be horribly killed off in spasm-tastic manners. So of course, the shamans decided they needed to put their heads together to solve the problem. So they did. Again, literally. By combining their very souls, psychic powers, knowledge, and strength, through ritualistic mass suicide, they achieved in the blink of an eye something that had taken the old ones an entire species worth of evolution to do. They all became a single living being of spiritual energy and power. In short, they created me. <gasps>
Bear Moth, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this was a great, great series. If you haven't watched it, guys, please go watch it. It's so good, it's so funny, it's so enjoyable. Mankind cannot live this. On this day, we shall know our enemy by the name that I shall give them. We shall know them as... Space Bugs. The space bags of death! <laughs> you get off my marble palace before you make anything dirty! Oh, thanks for the warning. Outrageous! Okay guys, that's it with If the Emperor Had a Text-to-Speech Device, Episode 16, uh, Universal History with Professor Emperor by Bruva Alphabusa. Yes, the Professor has given us a rundown on the universe as they know it, how it began and where it is and uh, potential futures probably on how things are going to turn out. Um, he's told us about the old ones, the Necrontia, the Satan or Catan. Uh, he's also told us about the Eldar and the Orcs you know, all of their origin stories. And then he also told us about humanity and how he was created out of the suicide uh, ritual that the shamans, you know, did for him to come into existence. Um, yeah, he told us a lot. He told us a lot of things. And most of it I've already heard before from other YouTubers who also do Warhammer 40K content. So most of it I already knew. Um, I'm just kind of disappointed that, you know, the custodians have allowed themselves to lose such valuable information about the history, uh, about the origins of the universe and stuff like that, you know, and allowed the, uh, the Inquisition and the Ecclesiarchy to erase that from uh, the records. I mean, sure, they can do it for the rest of humanity, but not you guys. You guys are the custodians. You guys should be knowing these things, you know. Uh, you're defending the emperor and the emperor does not doesn't need any superstitions doesn't need any type of uh, half truths he needs the full truth he needs you guys to understand the full truth you know so yeah that was a bit shocking for me <laughs> um, but guys yeah that's it for today if you like the video remember to give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and remember, if you want to check out the original video as well as Rufa Alpha Bruce's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. Okay, until next week, Thursday. Bye bye.